Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor George. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a great joy to bring the word of God to all of you, especially those who are watching in your homes and all of our uh, online viewers. May the Lord bless you and uh, touch your lives with your presence. As you hear, I again want to congratulate all our graduates and they have done a marvelous job. May the Lord richly bless them and bless their future and uh, the guidance of the Heavenly Father will be with you and hopefully we can celebrate it together uh, to the near future. Uh, this morning, I once again thank you for uh, all of your participation, especially I appreciate our worship team and our media team for doing a wonderful job. And we have been um, live streaming all our services uh, almost over two months now. So if God willing, as uh, Pastor George did the announcement, uh, we will be prayerfully considering to opening our church next Sunday, uh, the 31st of uh, May. So we request you to prayerfully consider to come and uh, all of you might have received the guidance uh, the guidelines that you must follow and uh, we will be prepared to uh, keep you safe and uh, more than anything else the presence of God will give us uh, his strength and his uh, supernatural protection upon our life to watch over us. So this morning let us um, tend to the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit of God to uh, speak to our hearts and uh, close for a moment. Holy God, loving Father, we thank you for this morning and bless your holy name. Speak to our hearts through your word and strengthen us, O God. And we commit the entire audience in your mighty hand and uh, open our understanding and mind. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. I titled today's sermon is, Can These Bones Live? That's a question mark. Can these bones live? And I have heard many people asking, when are we going to get back to normal? It's a question mark, a lot of question mark. Is the situation is going to change? Another question mark. When we do our, uh, when can we do our routine uh, things, etc.? So many unanswered questions. You know, in every situation of life, God is able to prepare a child of God for a comeback in its fullness. Let me repeat that again. In every situation of life, God is able to prepare a child of God for a comeback in its fullness. Do you believe that? Yes, I do believe that. So in Psalms 92, verse 13 through 15 says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So make sure that a child of God should have an understanding that who you are in Christ, you are planted in the house of the Lord and you shall be flourishing in the court of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. It doesn't matter how old you are. God is not done with you yet. So you can still bring fruit. They shall be fresh and flourishing. A child of God can be fresh all the time and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. What is the purpose of God keeping us in a flourishing mode is to declare the beauty, the power, the glory of our God. And our God is an upright God and he is my rock. He is my solid uh, refuge for a child of God. And there no unrighteousness in him. So this verse is so powerful. Those who planted in the house of the Lord, we will be flourishing. We will be bearing fruit. We will be fresh. And, you know, we will be serving a righteous God and lifting his name up and glorifying and we will be witness to him. That is the purpose of our God. The way of a righteous is again declared in Psalm 1 verse 3. The righteous shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit 
in its season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In this dark time of our life, the situation, the time, God does have a plan for our life. He has planted us in his house and we are supposed to praise him in his cause. So this morning I just wanted to go through the, the dry bones. The Lord is asking a question, shall these bones live? Only a child of God do you have this kind of an experience and they can see what the Lord can do in a situation where everything is scattered, there is no promise and there is no hope. Everything is disconnected. A dry valley of situation. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 10, you can see the story of the dry bone. And here it says, And the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in, uh, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. It is an experience that the prophet went through. God waked him up and he, he, he brought him to the valley where there is uh, dry bones. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were of very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. So God caused the prophet to go through a situation that it was not very pleasant. It was in the midst of the dry bones in a valley, he placed him there. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And then God is asking a question. And a question of impossibility, that he cannot come up with an answer. So I answered, oh Lord, you know. You know, sometimes, you know, many questions, I, hear, I said in the beginning, we can, we, can, we can ask so many questions in a situations like this. But instead of finding out an answer, the prophet is committing and leaning on to the old knowledge of God. And he said, Lord, you know you know it. You are all knowing God. Again, he said to me, so the, the Ezekiel said, thought his, his, his uh, commitment is stopped there and God may leave him alone. But the Lord wanted to teach him something. God wanted to use him and his talents and his ability to prophesy, bring a life. So during this time of situation, the darkness and the time where there is no answer for us, we may think that, oh, this is the end of my, my responsibility. God is finished with me. So I, I committed everything into the Lord. And he said, Lord, I am unable to answer your questions and I want you to know everything. Of course, that's a good quality. Instead of finding out our own answer and saying something which is which is the confusing. He committed into the hand of the Lord. But the Lord again started speaking to him. Again, the Lord said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, call it with their name. Do you know the situation? They are dry bones. And call the right situation in the right name that you can call. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Of course, when you're facing a challenge, challenge with a situation, you cannot ignore the facts. The Lord, the prophet said it is dry bones, and there is no doubt it is dry bones. The Lord said, I brought you here in this valley in an uncomfortable situation for you to speak to the situation and change the, your position from this to another. You do have the authority. I want you to prophesy on these dry bones. I want you to use your God-given talents and see what will happen to your current situation. God has entrusted us with wonderful responsibility for a child of God to come out of your darkness and the valley of the dry bone situation. 
That means we can call forth the power of God into any kind of situation that you're going through. That's what we are praying against the coronavirus, against the situation for the Lord to intervene. Of course, there may be vaccines and, and, and tablets and things coming up. But you don't need to wait for that situation. God is in control. And he knows your position. Thus saith the Lord to these bones, sure, uh, again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Thus saith the Lord to this born, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. What is the plan of God? God wanted to change the dry bones into the living being. That means he wanted to replace the darkness, the, the things that is not uh, with a form or, 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 or any kind of uh, figure. The Lord wanted to make that into a living being. I will put sinews on you and bring f uh, flesh upon you. Cover you with skin and put breath in, in you. And you shall live. That is the plan of God. You shall live. You cannot stay as dry bones forever. You cannot live your life with fear forever. You cannot live your life with the sickness and addiction forever. You must live. And surely the Lord will cause it. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Why God is bringing this man of God to the valley of dry bones. There is no connection. All, all these bones are scattered and with with. No figure, no, no form. The Lord said, I will do my work. But I want prophet Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy my word upon these dry bones. Child of God, we do have a responsibility, of course. Sometimes we may try to get out of this place. That's what the man of God wanted to do. He wanted to hand it to God. God, you ask me a question, is this bones live? I don't have an answer. But I know one thing, you know. They did everything. But the Lord is not willing to part you from there. And you need to take a position and come into realization that you are working with God. And God is in control of the situations. So what, what the prophet, I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesy, there was a noise. Children of God, when you stand for the Lord, when you obey the voice of God, when you speak by the authority of the Lord, you will see the change. You will see something is going to happen. And while he was prophesying, immediately he was hearing something, a noise is coming up. Suddenly a rattling, a change, a sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Hallelujah. Things are going to change. The Lord is going to stand up for us. The darkness will be not there for anymore. And the power of God will penetrate into the situation that is so confusing, that is so difficult, that is so uh, not to manage. God is going to work on our behalf. When you start speaking, when you start praying, when you start using your authority, you will see supernatural things will happen and taking place into our life and to our nation's life and your community and your home itself. Because God is enthroning. He is standing for us. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So you start hearing a noise and rattling sound. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. He is watching a physical transformation happening in, in, in front of his naked eye. So he is experiencing what the Lord can do, what the power of God can bring, to, bring it together. It was an 
unsolvent, uh, uh, a puzzle that cannot be solved. So the Lord is putting things together for us. And the skin covered them over. There was no breath in them. So for everything has been taking place in order. God is a God of order. So if you are facing or challenged with any kind of disorder, welcome and invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into that situation. God is a God of order. He can bring it together. And he also said to me, no, no, things are coming together, but there is no breath. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from four winds, O breath, and breathe on this slain, and they may live. So God's plan is a total, a complete plan. He won't let you down on your halfway. He wanted to see that you are finishing your task. You are finishing your goal. He never leave you alone on a halfway, undone. God called you for a complete work. So the man of God was watching what's happening. When we start prophesying, things are changing. God is putting things together for a child of God. Of course, there is a question. We, we do have doubts. But in spite of all our doubts and all our questions, God is still waiting for you to act on your faith and act on your belief. And God will do things for you and me. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath came into them and they lived and stood up in their feet an exceedingly great army. A dry born into a great army. Agape Church family, those who are hearing me this morning, you will be not the same anymore. Why you are going through, you are going through a dark uh, time of your life. A situation that nobody expected happened. But God is in control of the situation. He can understand each of the situation can be changed into a, a different level. And all these dry bones just become an exceedingly great army for the Lord. I just wanted to give you a few points from this, from this story of the dry bones. The first important point I want to make here is the hand of the Lord will lead, guide, and establish you. The hand of God will lead, guide, and establish you. We need to believe that. There is God is in control. That's what Ezekiel 37 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out into the, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. So what did the Lord worked on his life and he woke him up and, and uh, led him through to the valley and guided him and set his life and established his life for a purpose. Psalm 91, 11 and 12 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you. That means there is a God who is in control and he is in charge of our life to keep you in all your ways. It can be in a dry valley. It can be in a cage or in a dark place. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. That means God is guiding your life. He is directing your life. And he is giving you guidance to move forward without uh, you getting into danger and protecting your life. Isaiah 30, 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Children of God, sometimes we get confused in our life. We get confused about our future. 
And you will hear the voice of God telling you that this is the way. You must walk in it. Whenever you turn right, turn to the right, right hand, or whenever you turn to the left, the Lord will give you direction and instruction. Just like he guided, instructed, and established the prophet for a great purpose of God, God will do the same in our life also. If you are a man of God, woman of God, child of God, you are hearing the voice and worshipping him and honoring him, you can experience the Lord is leading you in your life. You can experience that his guidance in your life. You can see that God is establishing you on a daily basis for a greater purpose. A God-given purpose and the plan of God will establish through your life. The second lesson we can understand from this story is, God may cause you to stand in an uncomfortable situation. Is it not? Sometimes all our situations may not be comfortable. God will place us in, a, in an uncomfortable situation. That's what happened to the prophet. Ezekiel 37, 2 says, Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were all dry. So the Lord caused the prophet to go through the valley of dry boards. It was not a pleasant situation. Unpleasant situation, but the Bible says, the Lord says, fear not. Sometimes you may go through this uncomfortable situation, but you are not supposed to fear. The Bible says in Psalm 23, 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the Lord may cause you to stay in an uncomfortable situation, but he has given us the promise for fear not, I will walk with you. Even though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The Bible says, I will be with you. My road and my staff will comfort you, will, will comfort you. That's the promise of God. Psalm 27, 3 says, Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war, the war may arise against me. In this I will be confident. So the promise of God is there for a child of God. Just like the prophet went through an uncomfortable situation. In the middle of that you can receive and hear the promise of God. The third important lesson we can understand. God will honor your sincere opinion. Be honest and truthful to God. Don't try to find answer for everything. When the Lord asked the prophet, can these bones live? He did not worry about finding out an answer. When you are confused and not with an answer, let the Lord fill in the blanks for us. He knows everything. Don't hesitate to say, I don't know, Lord. And the Lord will take the rest. God will honor your sincere opinion. Be truthful. Be honest in your statement. Ezekiel 37, 3. And the Lord said to him, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. There are so many questions we may not have an answer, but present it to the hand of God. And he will come with an answer. He will come with an idea. And he will tell you what to do. And when to do, the right time is his time. So remember, God will honor your sincere opinion. The fourth point we can learn from this story is be available to obey and do God's instruction. We need to be available. Sometimes 
if the situation may be uncomfortable, but when the Lord leads you there, be available for God and try to follow the instruction that he's telling you. In fact, the prophet was confused about the end result. He was willing to prophesy what the Lord told him. Even though in his own mind, he might have not believed that these bones can stand up as a wonderful army. They can live again. But without doubting the possibility of God's word and command, he was willing to prophesy to the dry bones. God will always work through you if you are available for him. He called you to make a difference in the dry and darkest time. We need to understand that. God called us to make a difference. Once you acknowledge that the Lord knows everything, he will start guiding and instructing you for the rest. That's what has happened in this story of dry bones. Ezekiel 37, 4, again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Children of God, as you know that we will be starting our church next week. Of course, people may ask so many questions, but we are going to hear the voice of God. We are going to stand on his promise. We are going to command the sickness to depart from our lives and from our families. But God is enthroned and he is in authority. We will take a position under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Just like Ezekiel took a position for the Lord's voice, the Lord's word. And he committed, he, he positioned himself to stand in the midst of an uncomfortable valley with the full of dry bones. And we start prophesying his soul, the, the, the supernatural change that is happening in the valley. Now there is no more the valley of dry bones. There is a valley of living. Hallelujah. That's the plan of God for you and me. We are called to make a difference. God is entrusting a responsibility to each and every one of us to stand strong and take a position for the voice of God under the action of the Holy Spirit. The fifth and last point I want to make is once the Lord commands, it settles. Once the Lord commands, it settles. The Lord said, these bonds are going to live. Nobody can come against the voice of God. Agape Church family, God's plan for you and me is to flourish and to live and to be victorious. There is no more dry bone. We are here to make a difference. We are in the land of the living and going to see the goodness of the Lord. That's the purpose of God for our life. Ezekiel 37, 10 says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. God is causing them to stand on their own feet. It was scattered in the valley. I got the church family. This message is coming as a unique message for your life. But we are not called to stay in fear, to stay as a scattered group of people. But we need to be together, standing together in our own feet, as an exceedingly joyful people, and worshiping together in the sanctuary. And bring the glory down and the presence of God down into our life. And carry that power and go out and carry the great message, the great commission that the Lord has given to us. God, when God raises, his enemies will scatter. 
and the, there will be peace. The stone will be God. Gospel of Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. You know, when, on the same day when the evening had come and he said to them, let's cross over to the other side, Jesus and his disciples. Jesus called the disciples to cross over to the other side. And they, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in their boats uh, as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. The Lord will stand for you and me. When we go through a stormy atmosphere and you're about to sing and the boat is about to sing in the water, what we need to do is cry unto our master. He is in our boat and he will stand for us. He will rebuke the, the, the plague and he will rebuke the wind. He will rebuke the storm. Jesus said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Children of God, we are going to experience a great calm is going to happen to the entire world and in your own life. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? That they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can... Uh, this be that even the wind and the sea obey him. Our God is a great God. Jesus is in our boat. As he is in our situation, he can see what's going to happen. And the only thing what we need to do is identify the presence of Christ in our life. And he is the master of everything. He is the master of the universe. He is the master builder. He is our creator God. He is a strong rock and a powerful refuge for a child of God. The same question is asking to you and me. Can these bones live? What's our answer? Yes, Lord. You know that. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to act on your word. I'm going to stand on your promise. I do believe that you are the creator God. You can create everything and you can do everything into our life. Children of God, while I'm concluding this sermon here, may the Lord, the Holy Spirit, bring hope in our life. Brings hope and greatness in the dark situation that you are going through. We are going to experience a great calm that Jesus is standing for us. He is willing to rebuke the situation and, uh, and, and, and bring peace and calmness into the stormy atmosphere. So how do we experience the presence of God? Through the story of the dry bones. I have shared you five points. I just wanted to brief you that. The hand of the Lord will lead you guide you and establish you. Submit our life before the presence of God. Ask the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, you guide me. You, I want your leading, leadership into my life. I want you to establish me. The second point I said, you, God may cause you to stand in an uncomfortable situation, but still this promise is unchanging. You will be fearful about the situation, but the Lord said, fear not. I will be with you. I will stand with you. And the third thing, the, you know, God will honor your sincere opinion. So frank before the presence of God. Don't try to find an answer for everything. Submit into the hand of God. If you're conf you are, you are confused with the, with the situation, if you don't have an answer before the presence of God, just tell Lord, you know everything. 
And fourth point that he said is be available to obey God's instruction. Many times God is looking for vessels to pour into his spirit and his anointing and his power. Ezekiel was a tool in the hand of God. He was willing to face the challenge. He was willing to go through the valley of the dry boards and stand there in an uncomfortable situation and willing to hear the voice of God. And he prophesied to the dry bones to live. The last thing is, once the Lord commands, it settles. God is going to take our position and our situation and he's going to change into something beautiful. This morning, I want you to commit your life before the presence of God. Of course, we may face the situation of dry bones. You may go through a difficult situation in your life that is not uncomfortable. But the Lord is in control of our life and your life. Just like Ezekiel said, Lord, I am a vessel that you can use me. You can, I can be a spokesperson for you. Speak through me. How many of you come into your life this morning to the hand of the Lord to be fruitful in his presence? Agape Church family, God is in control. He is going to bring peace and, 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 and calm the storm for us. Let us stand together Come together with a great and committed attitude to do great and mighty things for the Lord. I thank God for those who are celebrating your birthdays and anniversaries. If you are sitting and listening to me with the need of your life, I'm going to pray for you. God will hear our prayer and he will deliver you from whatever the situations you're going through. If you're struggling with sickness in your body, I want you to put your hand on the part of your body that giving you trouble. Jesus is our healer. If you're worried about your tomorrow and your future, God is your future. He has an answer for everything. This morning I want you to close your eyes while we are going to pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your mercies. Father, we thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for your plan for our life. And we must live like an army and stand in our own feet and strong and do great and mighty things for your kingdom. I bless your people. I pray for those who are celebrating with their anniversaries and birthdays, oh God. You bless them. Bless them with the heaven's choices blessing. Father, I pray for all our graduates and I bless them in the name of the Lord. Let their future be bright. Let them glorify your name with their life and with their education. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, and everyone said, Amen. When you lift your hand towards heaven, as the Holy Spirit touches one more time, let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.